Good morning, welcome, and thank you for joining us today for the latest in our series of live webinars that we're hosting via our new link portal, which can be found on our homepage at Teledyne Marine. Uh, my name is Margo Newcomb. I'm the Director of Marketing Communications for the Instruments and Imaging Groups here in the Americas. We hope everyone is staying safe and healthy these days and not getting stir crazy. I know how difficult and challenging uh, it's getting at this point with uh, so many days in lockdown. Uh, before I move on to our introduction for our speaker today, I do want to make a note that we had some issues yesterday with our live webinar and the recording of that uh, event which Julia, who I'll introduce in a moment, did a fantastic job with. And uh, due to some technical difficulties, uh, we're having to re-record this. So uh, for those of you that did attend yesterday's session, it might sound a little bit different, and, and, and that's why. For those of you that missed it, then it will sound exactly as it should. <laughs> so uh, anyway, sometimes those technical things do come up. Uh, so I'd like to introduce our speaker today. I'm very fortunate to normally be sitting in the same office uh, here on Cape Cod with our speaker today, who is Julia Rugo. Julia is our applications engineer at Teledyne Benthos. She does an amazing job servicing our field, uh, our uh, sales team, as well as our customers, as well as our customers out in the field. So Julia, uh, thanks for speaking with us today. We're really excited to hear all about our newest acoustic release feature that allows users to survey in the mornings. So without further ado, I'll hand it off to you. Thanks, Margo. Hi, everyone. So again, I'm Julia Rugo, Applications Engineer for Teledyne Marine. I'm here to tell you today about the new GNSS feature that is paired with our UTS 9400. So with this feature, you are able to survey moorings and acoustic releases anywhere in the world. A little bit about Teledyne Benthos, where I work. So we were founded in 1962 and acquired in 2006 by Teledyne Marine. We have about 150 employees at our facility in North Falmouth who work for either Teledyne Benthos, Teledyne Web Research, and Teledyne Taptone. Our location is here, North Falmouth, Massachusetts, United States. And Teledyne Benthos makes acoustic releases, acoustic modems, positioning systems, and really any underwater wireless solution that you're looking for. So a little picture of some of our glass spheres and moorings. And let's find your mooring. Here is a picture of the UTS 9400 with the GNSS feature highlighted. So for mooring applications used with our R-series releases, we use the standard LF, low frequency, 9 to 14 kilohertz frequency band. 25 meter cable is standard. It comes to connect with that dunking transducer that you see in the picture. We also have cable abilities of 20, 50 meters, 100 meters, or up to 200 meters for high rel reliability in deep water operations. The UTS 9400 has a colorful touchscreen GUI where no external computer is required for command and control of your subsea assets, whether that be an acoustic modem sending data or an acoustic release where you are arranging and sending release codes. No external GUI um, computer is required. So the GNSS feature is a really cool addition to the UTS. Your current UTS 9400s can be retrofitted with this, with this feature, or you can buy the feature new with a new UTS. We allow real-time surveying with this feature so that you do not have to go home and use an external computer software to survey and find the location of your mooring, but the UTS does it all on its internal processors in real time. We do this by feeding a GPS signal into the USB port of the, on the faceplate of the UTS. With that USB GPS GNSS feature, we're also able to geotag events, which is an exciting new feature, so that you know the exact location, latitude, longitude, and time that any events on your operations were happening. And you're able to ex export all of that data off your USB port for 
later use. Here is a little screen um, to show the GPS, GNSS satellites available to the UTS. So we have a GPS that allows satellites, satellite fixes for wherever you are in the world. You're able to choose your GNSS system and you can mix and match these systems. So you can use GPS, Beidou, GLONASS, or Galileo satellites so that anywhere you are in the world, you can find a good fix. You see here the satellites shown and how they are listed by SNR. The best SNR being greater than 25 is in blue, really good fixes. And where some satellites are a little bit further away, less SNR, you see the red, and the whites are not used for your solution as they don't have a very great SNR. With that, I'll walk you through how we use this GNSS feature. Here you can see the location tab of the R series screen. We have two waypoints marked here. So there are three different types of waypoints that you can choose from. A marked waypoint, so say you are out, you deploy a mooring and you want to mark that location. You mark it and it takes the latitude and longitude you're currently at and saves it as is. Uh, a surveyed location is shown on the right and this is after a survey has been performed and completed and the UTS comes along and calculates exactly where that mooring is sub C. The other waypoint is an entered waypoint so that you can enter your own latitude and longitude of your mooring. So say you have a marked mooring and you want to go and retrieve your acoustic release, your acoustic mooring, your acoustic modem, whatever's down there. In order to do that, we can set destination to the marked waypoint or the surveyed waypoint. And you'll see here, you come to a GNSS positioning screen. On the right, you'll see your course over ground and bearing towards the mooring. So you're on your, you're on your vessel and you're on your way to the mooring. You see your current position in blue and your destination in black below. We have our speed and our HDOP, which is the high dilution precision of our satellite fixes. So once we're at our marked location, we begin a survey. We come to the survey screen of your GNSS and you choose your target mooring. So right here, I'm using an R-series with remote address 97. Our R-series acoustic releases have special addresses. Each has a unique address so that you know you're talking to that mooring, that release specifically, and only that one will be coming back when you send it its specific unique release code. So to, be, to begin the survey, um, we'd begin, we press the start button down here and you'd begin seeing on the solution part of the screen, received and sent range requests. So to survey, we send range requests, broadband range requests and receive chirps back from the modem. And with those chirps and depending on where the GPS is, we begin to find a surveyed solution. So here we can go to the plot screen from that surveyed solution screen and you see your vessel in real time on a latitude and longitude plot. Um, the, the blue dots are where range requests are received back from the acoustic release. And you see here we are doing a circle survey. We are slowly going around the entire mooring where we think it to be and receiving we've received 19 out of 19 range requests and with each of these location points and the range to the subsea asset we're beginning to gather enough data that the UTS can make a surveyed solution understanding so as we keep going here we begin to see that our UTS has 
pinned down the beginnings of where this R series, where this mooring is. Uh, it's chosen a latitude and longitude as well as a depth, and we get a circle error of precision as well, so you know how, how good this, this fix is. As we continue going along, that is going to come in even closer so that the depth is more accurate and the latitude and longitude is as most accurate too. Here on the screen, I just want to point out that there's also the ability to take a snapshot of the screen so you can look back on it later and you can set your destinations and mark any locations that are of interest to you. You're also able to zoom in and out to come closer or further away from that mooring. So here we've finished our circle survey and the final solution has been found. This was a, a true, true survey that I did out in Woods Hole last summer. And I knew that we were at a, our mooring was about 10 meters deep. And that was the latitude and longitude that we found. So with many points in their circle survey, we were able to locate exactly where that R series was. So this is now saved as a surveyed waypoint and it can be retrieved. So now we're still back on our R series screen and now I want to retrieve my mooring. So I would go to the release tab and I would put in the unique identifier of release code for that, for that acoustic release and send it back. Here is a little overview of the R series releases that we have here at Teledyne Benthos. Uh, the survey that I had done was with the R500, which is a shallow water release. It has a 500 meter depth rating and 18 months battery life alkaline batteries. It weighs about 4.6 pounds in water or 2.1 kilograms. The next heavy duty is the R2K, our mid water release. It has a 2000 meter depth rating and a 2000 kilograms release load. It has four years alkaline battery life and weighs about 13 kilograms in water. Its range um, in acoustics is between six to 12 kilometers in the low frequency band. And worth mentioning for the R500, we get about two kilometers range with the R500 as it's a more shallow water release. Finally is our deep water release, the R12K. It has a 12,000 meter full ocean depth rating and a 4,540 kilograms load rating. It also gets six to 12 kilometers depending on acoustic conditions of acoustic communications and has a four year life battery span. It weighs about 28 kilograms in water. I also wanted to touch upon the acoustic snapshot that we see on the right side of the screen here. This is a special diagnostic on the UTS. Shown here is an impulse response that can help identify multipath issues, as well as detect echoes in the topside transmissions that may be interfering with your communications. So this is a really cool feature on the UTS that allows a really great diagnostics so that you can find reliable and good communications with your subsea assets. Also worth noting is that we are able to collect an, a one second time series sample of the in-band acoustics on the UTS. So if you're have this, this basically records in a one second interval, all the inboard noise that's coming into the UTS for uh, post-processing if need be, we collect these and save them as base banded waveforms in the real and imaginary form, as well as a pass band 96 kilohertz sample rate form. So you get three waveforms, dot wave, that can be offloaded off the UTS for better understanding of your acoustic environment in a later point in time. And with that, I think that's about all I have to touch on today. Um, so thank you very much. And 
if there are any questions, I am welcome to hear them. Great. Thank you, Julia. That was uh, really informative. And even the second time around, it was even more informative. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thanks again for doing the recording for us. We do have some questions that were asked yesterday, and there, was, there really were a lot of great questions that came in at the end. So um, although this is not live, I think it would be a good opportunity for those of you that are listening to this uh, to have an opportunity to catch these questions. Um, so um, Julia, if you're game, I'll uh, go ahead and fire off a few of these questions uh, so we can get them recorded for posterity here. So yes, absolutely. Great. Okay. So one of the first questions that came through was, um, does this feature also work with older Benthos releases? Uh, uh, that's let's make yeah, a question number one. Does this feature work with older Benthos acoustic releases? Yes, it does. And this is something that I missed yesterday. I had forgot that we were able to do tonal transponding with the UTS GNSS feature. So our previous releases use tonal transponding, while our R series releases use broadband ranging. Um, the UTS GNSS feature is able to work and do a survey with a tonal transponding type of range request instead of just the broadband. So basically this UTS GNSS feature can be used for any transponder or any acoustic modem within the frequency band of the UTS. Okay, great, great. Uh, another question, does the UTS support releases from other manufacturers, other acoustic release manufacturers? Yes, we do. We support releases, edge tech releases, as well as URI CPIs and uh, also, your IC pies, edge tech, and my that, about, that uh, those how are the about X blue. Is, is it X we're working on? So okay. uh, it's it'd be interesting to know who's looking for what because we are working towards integrating with IX blue. We have a few projects going on with them, and release codes will likely be one of them. Okay, great, great. Um, and uh, let's see, what is the approximate weight and dimensions of the deck box? Oh, Julie, I know this was one that we had to look up yesterday. Do you know those offhand? I, I believe it was about 17 inches by 12 inches. Does that sound about right? Yeah, that sounds about right. I don't have them off the top of my head again right now. Yeah, I believe it was it was in the area of 17 by 12 by 15, um, but we will yes. post clarification Correct. in the email on that. And the entire package, as I recall, was, uh, was under 30 pounds. Yes. It's the UTS comes in a very portable case. It has a handle and a Pelican box. And the dunking transducer and cable also comes with a Pelican box and handle so that you can just carry them. It's very easy. Okay, great. Uh, another question, is there an additional diver unit available in case uh, there is a situation that the, the, it does not pop up? So we do a great job calculating how long the batteries will last and what your operational scenarios are. So it's very unlikely that your acoustic release is not going to come back. Uh, also, we have tandem release kits so that uh, it's possible to deploy two at once just in case. But most of our customers have moved away from those tandems because the releases are so reliable and they always come back. Uh, with a diver application or the need for divers, we do not offer a direct diver solution, but our acoustic uh, positioning USBL system is used in multiple diver, commercial diver uh, systems. So we can help you with that as well and point you in the, uh, the right direction. Okay, great. Uh, another question, is there a split head option in case the transducer and electronics is on a different place on the mooring frame? Yes, there is. So we have a remote release available, remote transducer releases, so that the electronics and the transducer can be in different locations on the mooring. Okay, uh, and a final question. Uh, during the survey solution that you showed us, how fast can we move our vessel with the acoustic source deployed in the water? So that's a really good question. Um, and it really depends, again, on the operational scenario which vessel you're in and how you have the transducer deployed. If the transducer is just over the side of the boat, uh, you're going to want to go 
pretty slow and make sure that it's not being dragged and that you're not having too much acoustic interference from top um, from the boat motor and whatnot. But if the if the transducer is held on a pole over the side or is in a hull mounted interface, then you can go faster in your operations. Okay, that's great. something we can discuss for each each individual's needs. Great. All right, Julia, well, thank you again. And thank you to all of you for uh, downloading and listening to this webinar today. If you have any questions at all, uh, as you can see on the screen there, you can reach out to uh, Julia. She, if she does not have the answer, she will get you the answer. <laughs> and uh, you can also direct you to uh, members of our sales team if you uh, need a quotation or, or further assistance. So Julia, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it again. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you. Great. Yep, everyone have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.